What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, we're going to talk about some updated quotes on the Daniel Jones situation. And listen, yesterday, I could only go by the quotes that the insiders give. Tom Pelissero, of course, a very respected NFL insider, basically said, don't expect Daniel Jones to play this week. Um, he said he's week to week, and the expected starter will be Mike Glennon this week. Well, based off the quotes, uh, the quotes today from Joe Judge and Daniel Jones, it would least uh, lead you to believe that there's actually a slight possibility that Daniel Jones will be shooting up this week against the Miami Dolphins. Now, whether or not he plays or not this week, which I'm at least still leaning that he won't, and I'll explain my reasoning in this video as to why. Obviously, I hope that I'm wrong, and I hope that he goes out there and plays if he's capable of playing. The good news here, for me at least, this does not seem like it's even close to being something that is viewed as a season-ending injury or something, hopefully, that should go on for more than a week. I expect him to be out there probably at the latest against the Chargers. If not, then definitely the week after that. And we'll have to wait and see. But the Dan I watched the interview with Daniel Jones at the podium. He practiced today. So it looks like Daniel Jones, it will not be season-ending uh, season and that's great news. The main reason being, obviously, I want to be able to compete and make the playoffs. The other reason, we want to be able to evaluate this quarterback, especially with a new play caller with Freddie Kitchens and hopefully getting some of those weapons back. News came out today as well that it looks like it's at least doubtful from some of the things that I read that Tony will suit up this week, which of course is not good. Shepard seems to be making some progress. So we'll see if he gets Shepard back in this offense and hopefully Tony as well. But let's jump into some of the quotes. The other thing that I wanted to talk about as well, and something that's been a very to uh, popular topic among Giants fans, has been the debate about Matt Parrott and Nate Solder. Well, Joe Judge was pressed on that today, and I'm going to give my opinion as to what he said and why I think, and I think most Giant fans think at this point in time, Matt Parrott should be the starter. But let's jump in first to the updated Daniel Jones quotes. The first thing I wanted to talk about is what Jordan Renan had to say. Daniel Jones still has a chance to play Sunday versus Miami per source. He's expected to return this season per sources that aren't the Carpenter. Of course, that's a joke. Yesterday, a guy came out about four hours before the story broke, some unknown guy on Twitter, and said that his Carpenter said that Daniel Jones will be out for the season. And then, of course, because the story broke four hours later, people started to get, you know, very panicky. And don't be surprised if Jones is even on the field practicing non-contact when is it not for quarterbacks later this morning, which he was. Then went on to say this, Daniel Jones is a strained neck. Nothing else beyond that. He says, think, uh, thinks there is a chance he plays Sunday versus the Dolphins. Yeah, I'm going through the week preparing to play. One thing I would really want to stress with, and I didn't really so much stress with my reaction video uh, yesterday with Daniel Jones, this guy is one tough son of a bitch. You can say what you want about Daniel Jones. You could definitely question his durability. You could definitely question his decision-making at times. You cannot question this man's toughness. This guy went out there after getting hurt with a strained neck on the second play uh, of last week's game, and he went out there and he finished the entire game. He had eight running plays after that. Now, of course, I'm sure the coaches didn't know at the time. This seems like this, this was something, at least according to Daniel Jones, that really came up after the game. I'm sure that Jones was probably dealing with the pain and wanted to make sure that he stayed out there and played. But Daniel Jones is certainly a tough quarterback. This then coming out as well from Jordan Renan. Daniel Jones at practice. Practicing, taking reps. Sunday is definitely in play. Here's what I'm going to say. Do I expect him to play? We'll see. The fact that they pick up, picked up Jake Fromm yesterday really makes me question whether or not he's going to play this week, especially after all the injury concerns came out. The great news is I do not think this will be season-ending, and I'm hoping at the latest he'll be back for the Chargers game. Of course, we're going to have to wait and see how that all plays out. Of course, I'm dying to see him play this week. I obviously think he gives us a much better chance to, to win than that of Mike Glennon. A lot of people talk about Mike Glennon and say, oh, well, look at Kadarius Tony with Glennon. He had a good game. He had a good game because we were playing the Dallas Cowboys secondary. He also had a good game because they, we were down by like 20 points and the Cowboys were in prevent defense. Glennon also threw two interceptions in that game. There was no way you could convince me that Mike Glennon gives us a better chance to win than that of Daniel Jones. So I'm hoping that he's out there. Obviously a big game coming up this week for the New York Giants. The reason I still have my doubts outside of the fact, like I just talked about with Jake Fromm, Joe Judge is playing, it's gamesmanship. I don't think he wants to tilt his hand. I don't think that he wants to give Brian Flores any advantage that he already may have in terms of knowing which quarterback's going to go out there and play. 
But if Jones is capable of playing, I'm sure he will be. But the Giants are not going to tip their hand. They don't want to give the Dolphins any added advantage than that of which they may already have, like I said. So we'll have to wait and see. I'm hoping Jones plays. I'm expecting for the worst. I'm hoping for the best. Um, I would lean that he will be out this week, and he will probably be back against the Chargers. Again, I don't work for the Giants. I'm not a doctor. That's just the way it feels for me. But I am relieved that it does not sound like it'll be season ending and we'll get to see Daniel Jones out there hopefully sooner than later with the new play caller with Freddie Kitchens and hopefully this offense advances as he gets his new weapons back. Next thing I really wanted to touch on was the offensive line debate. And this was asked by Patricia Train, I believe. She came out with an article today. Uh, I've been on her channel before. She's great. Wanted to jump into some of the quotes. Obviously, it's been a major debate uh, between Giants fans and I guess the Giants themselves this entire year. Why isn't Matt Barrett playing? And I'll jump into some of the things that Dave Gettleman said before the year started. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm a guy that absolutely wants to draft a tackle in next year's draft. I'm going to tell you right now, I am far from convinced that Matt Barrett is the long-term answer on the right side. After all, he was the 99th overall selection. He was a project. I'm sick of having projects on this offensive line. However, I see no reason whatsoever why Matt Barrett shouldn't be out there. Now, if I felt that Nate Solder was much better than Matt Barrett, I would say, okay, I get it. You don't want to get your quarterback killed. But Nate Solder is not much better than anybody. Now, obviously, the New York Giants feel that Nate Solder is better than Matt Barrett. Otherwise, Nate Solder wouldn't be playing. And I'm going to trust their judgment over mine. They're paid professionals. And that may very well be the case. But he's certainly not better enough to the point where you don't need to start to get this guy some exposure. Yes, I recognize that Matt Barrett was out there in jumbo packages. This guy needs to play the tackle position. Nate Solder, all you got to do is look at the film. The guy is horrible. And we'll go over some of the PFF grades, so on and so forth. But Barrett can't be much worse. But we'll jump into some of the things that Joe Judge had to say about the right tackle position. First, I wanted to jump into what Gettleman had to say. And I think it's why a lot of Giants fans are discouraged. A lot of Giants fans, like myself, wanted the Giants to go out there and draft Rashawn Slater. And if not Slater, wanted them to draft an offensive lineman relatively early in last year's draft. Gettleman's response to that before the year started was this. There's been talk about parting ways with uh, Zeitler, and Gettleman said he's comfortable with 2023rd round pick Matt Barrett as the right tackle opposite Thomas. This is before the year started. When he played, he played fine, Gettleman said. He played pretty damn well. At some point, it's time. You've got to let the young kids play. Listen, every player was a rookie at some point or a young player at some point. At some point in time, you have to have confidence in who's on your club and you have to put him in there and let him play. Really, Dave? Maybe you should tell Joe Judge that. Because <laughs> we we have not seen Matt Pat out, paired out there enough. And there is no way going into the year that any of us wanted to see Nate Solder in the starting lineup. Now, when Nate Solder won the job, I said to myself, okay, give him a couple of weeks. Maybe they feel Matt Barrett's not ready. But that explanation that Dave gave in terms of referencing why they didn't draft an offensive lineman in this year's draft, they had faith in their young players, led me to believe that Matt Barrett certainly would be out there by now. And he's still not in the starting lineup. Now, here's what Joe Judge had to say regarding the two players. Talking specifically about Matt Barrett. We do expect him to play throughout different situations in different games, Judge said. Nate's taken the lion's share of a lot of reps, but Matt is always going to be prepared and expected to play. So basically a swing tackle and a guy that's come in there in jumbo packages. When asked if he needs to see anything more from Parrott, Judge said no. We just expect all of our players to come out and work hard every day and improve. Which I have no, I have no issues in terms of him backing up his players. That's exactly what a head coach is supposed to do. This then coming out as well when talking about Solder. We're pleased with the way Nate's progressed throughout the year and how he's playing for us right now, Judge said. He's a guy who comes out and works tirelessly. And I have no doubts that the guy's probably a hard worker. He's obviously got ties to Joe Judge, the New England roots. And Nate Solder is a really hard guy for me to hate because he seems like a great guy. I know he's got a really tough situation at home. But there is no way. And again, I'm not even going to full charge for saying this. He's backing up his player but it's bullshit. There is no way Joe Judge could be pleased with the way that Nate Solder is playing. And what of Barrett, um, and, and what of Barrett, whom one would think is the future right tackle with Solder's contract set to end after this season? Matt's doing a good job progressing as well. We'll look to involve him as well. We're using that in a lot of jumbo 
like I said earlier, tight end type situations and expand on his role there. We worked early in the year on some guard stuff. Really, his home at tackle is where he's progressing, but he's giving us contributions along the way as we go. So he's basically still saying we're easing him into the lineup. Well, what are you waiting for? You got a right tackle with Nate Solder, whose PFF grade is this, 55.7. And like I said, I know not all of us like to look at PFF. Just look at the film. Just watch the games. You don't need to be a a professional film critic to know that Nate Solder has been horrible this year for the New York Giants. In 683 snaps, he's committed five penalties. He's allowed four sacks. As far as Matt Parrott goes, he's higher, 63.9 in comparison to 55. So maybe you could certainly argue if you're judged that maybe they're at least even or maybe Nate Solder's slightly better, but he's not better to the point where we don't need to start getting Matt Parrott some reps. In 341 snaps, he's committed one penalty and surrendered three sacks. Like I said, I don't think Matt Parrott's the answer. I haven't thought that going into the year. That's why I wanted to draft Rashawn Slater. I think he's a swing tackle, and I don't rel- I don't want to have to rely on projects to build up this offensive line. Obviously, I hope that Matt Parrott proves me wrong, and I certainly want to see Matt Parrott out there on the football field, hopefully progressing as a football player. But in my opinion as a fan, and I have no say in terms of what the New York Giants decide to do with their personnel, I think Matt Parrott needs to be in the starting lineup, and I think I've seen quite enough of Nate Solder. Like I said, a former captain, a great guy, a leader of this football team, he ain't getting it done. And Matt Bear can't be any worse. And you got to get him some experience, like Dave Gettleman said, at the beginning of the year. We'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. Obviously, great news on the Daniel Jones front. I was really down in the dumps yesterday when I read a lot of things that I read. Doesn't seem like it's quite as serious as it was let on. Of course, the Giants could be playing gamesmanship. I expect them to be cautious with Daniel Jones, especially with what happened last year when I felt like the Giants rushed him rushed him back. If it was up to Daniel, though, I'm sure he'd be playing. But the doctors and judge and the coaching staff are going to do what they feel is right for Jones long term. Hopefully he's out there. But if he's not, I think he'll be out there a lot sooner than I initially anticipated. As always, guys, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.